the activity of trying to understand unarmed resistance in different forms uh, goes very long back uh, within academia. So I would say that um, there are several strands here. So we have obviously the, the strand of people being um, inspired by various forms of pacifism and of course of Gandhi, of nonviolent resistance and, and of Martin Luther King. Uh, so that's the field of civil resistance. That's the area of nonviolent direct action that people are looking at the civil rights movement, the anti-colonial movement in India and, and, and various ongoing movements today, all right? But then we also have a strand that is interesting uh, in the way that it looks on what's called everyday resistance. So that's the form of, um, you could say, dispersed, individualized resistance that um, ordinary people do in, in, at their workplace um, or in the family or neighborhood without being organized in any kind of uh, formal political organization, but they are reacting to and undermining uh, forms of domination that they encounter, which can be in very different contexts, like as being uh, small farmers or um, uh, being exploited in, uh, in uh, low paid industries, or people that are living as prisoners or slaves or, or um, uh, serfs in, in the earlier times. So everyday resistance is a kind of an interesting um, uh, field, which is um, uh, also part of resistance studies. Uh, you have a particular dynamic that I think characterizes the Gandhian approach. And I think a lot of the problems we see today with uh, the protest movements that are actually very powerful, applying the Gene Sharp model, overthrowing governments, uh, but without creating actually new and just uh, societies. I think it's a sign of this failure to recognize the importance of the individual change and the constructive change. So it's only when you combine the three elements, um, which I think I see some element, uh, some, some signs that, that there are authors and, and activists today that understand the importance of this. Um, I see that as very hopeful that can, can bridge this um, I think unproductive digging down in, in only one of the three aspects that Gandhi suggested. I think it's by time now that we kind of recognize the importance of the combination of the three elements. If you don't see any opportunity to use nonviolence, um, it is better to use violence than, than to be passive in, in face of the oppression of, of um, your people. So I think, yes, there is, there is a, there is a moral and uh, a legitimacy to the use of, of the armed struggle against oppression. But I see it more like also like Gandhi that it's more efficient to use nonviolent means. It, it's more uh, promising for the possibilities of creating um, a better society afterwards, because it's not only a matter of, of fighting against the um, immediate threat of, of oppression right now, it's also a matter of what actually works in the long term to create any form of liberation 